Hello, today we're looking at organization of cells into whole organisms and we're going to look at digestion in quite a lot of detail. Okay, so we're going to summarize how cells are organized to make up a whole organism, for example, a human being. And we'll start off by looking at this example of a cell. This is supposed to be a muscle cell. So this is designed to contract and allow movement. So there's our muscle cell. And if we were to put a bunch of them together, we would call this a tissue. So if we've got muscle cells joining together, we have muscle tissue. So there's a little diagram of our muscle tissue there. Now we can write a little definition of what we mean by tissue. So a tissue is a group of cells, a group of cells with similar uh, functions or structure that work together. So there I've written it as a group of cells with similar structure and function. So that makes our tissue. Here is another example of a tissue. So we have a bunch of cells that are working together and this is glandular tissue. And glandular tissue will actually secrete chemicals. Depending on where it is in the body, it will secrete different kinds of chemicals, but it could be hormones, it could be enzymes. But the main job is to secrete chemicals and that's glandular tissue. So that's two types of tissue. Now, we can often uh, put tissues together in fact, in the body, tissues are often joined together to make what we call organs. So an organ is basically a group of different tissues, but different tissues that are working together. We can describe it as an aggregate of tissues. So we can describe an organ as an aggregate of tissues uh, performing a particular job or performing a function. Okay, so that's our organ there. And in blue, we can highlight the function and in red, in fact, or a pinky color, we can do the actual structures that we're talking about. So our tissue, that's our definition of our tissue, and the organ definition is there. Now, one example of an organ, if we're sticking with our example of the digestive system, could be the stomach. And here is a picture or a little diagram of the stomach. It's there in that orangey color. Now, the stomach is part of an organ system. So if we get lots of different organs working together, we make our organ system. And if we're sticking with our example, the organ system could be the digestive system. Digestive system. And there is part of the digestive system in that diagram. And if we then get lots of systems working together, that builds up to the whole organism. And one simple example of that could be a human doesn't have to be a human lots of different animals that have organ systems joined together but in this example let's just pick stick with the human okay now in terms of our organ system and the connection with the organism we've got organ systems working together so lots of organ systems working together to make the organism okay so in pink there are the structures we should just highlight the cell there as well on the left hand side okay so we've built up from cells all the way up to our organism and that's the way it's done we can now take a look at the whole digestive system in a bit more detail. So the first thing to do actually is to be able to label the digestive system, label the digestive system, and hopefully you should be able to do this from year seven, eight or nine. I forget what year we studied that, but you should be able to do that. We've got the mouth, which leads to the food pipe, and a fancy word for food pipe is esophagus. That leads to the stomach, which leads to the small intestine, which leads to the large intestine. And then finally, the final point is the anus. So that's the pathway that food might take. But here we also have a couple of extra parts, the pancreas, the liver, and the gallbladder. Okay, so these are all important parts of the digestive system, and you should know and uh, be able to remember those. And if not, it might be worth just spending a minute on this diagram, making sure you know it. So these are the digestive system labels. What we need to do is to be able to also define what the digestive system does. So it breaks down large insoluble molecules, large insoluble molecules that are found in our food into small soluble molecules. Small soluble molecules. And that is really important because it's the small soluble molecules that we can absorb into the blood. So it's the small soluble molecules that can be absorb, absorbed into the blood and the blood can then carry those molecules around to the various parts of the body where they are needed. So food goes into the digestive system and most of the final parts of digestion happen in the small intestine and that's where the food is also absorbed into the blood. Okay, any food that cannot be digested, so any food that is not digestible will pass 
out through the body, through the anus. So this is not waste, this is material that cannot be digested. So it just passes straight through. So that definition in blue there is quite important, or in the blue bubble is quite important. And it's also important to remember that the whole of that process is controlled or done by various different enzymes. So it's various different enzymes that will take part in breaking down large insoluble molecules, molecules into small soluble ones. We need to know the names of the enzymes, where they are produced, and what precisely they do. So where and what they do in terms of enzymes in the digestive system. So the first one we need to look at is the uh, food source or the food type that's called carbohydrate. So carbohydrate is a good source of energy found in a whole bunch of various different foods. And that is broken down into simple sugars. Carbohydrates are broken down into simple sugars. As you can see there, those individual units on the right hand side. And the enzyme or the group of enzymes that takes care of that are called the carbohydrases. Carbohydrases. So that's a whole bunch of enzymes. We need to know one specific example of an enzyme. And this enzyme breaks down a substance called starch. So starch is a carbohydrate. And that's broken down into simple sugars as well, but into those double units there. And that takes us onto the name of that enzyme, and that enzyme would be amylase. So the carbohydrate starch is broken down by amylase into simple sugars. Our next food type that we need to look at are proteins, or is proteins. And here is an example of a protein. It's just drawn as a long chain, and those long chains of proteins can be broken down into individual units called amino acids. So those amino acids are just represented as different shapes on the right hand side of the diagram. Proteins are broken down into amino acids by enzymes called proteases. Let's write that a bit neater. So the enzymes that break down proteins are the proteases. And that's part of digestion as well. Finally at the bottom there, we've got the digestion of a food source or a food type called lipids. And lipids are fats and oils that are found in food. And those are broken down, oh, very untidy. Those are broken down into what we call fatty acids. So there's three fatty acid chains that you can see there, and another substance called glycerol in yellow there. Okay, so the fatty acids are those three chains there. We've got three fatty acid chains and a molecule of what we call glycerol. Now the enzyme that takes, or the enzymes that take control or take care of this are the lipases. So lipases break down lipids into fatty acids and glycerol. Okay, now what we need to be able to do is to work out where these enzymes, or remember where these enzymes function. So to help us do that, I'm going to abbreviate carbohydrates, amylase, lipase and protease into C, A, L and P to add to our diagram above. And we'll start off by looking at what happens in the mouth. So in the mouth, we have the digestion of starch, and so we have the presence of amylase. In the stomach, it's proteases only. The small intestine will make all four of those enzymes, and the pancreas will produce all four of those enzymes as well. So hopefully that's a slightly more visual way to remember it and makes it slightly easier to remember which enzyme is produced where. Also important to, rem to remember that the pancreas empties enzymes into the small intestine. Food does not pass through the pancreas, but the pancreas will make those enzymes and pass that food, sorry, pass those enzymes into the small intestine. Okay, now we need to look at a detailed uh, view of what the bile does or what bile does. And bile is a substance that helps with the digestion of lipids. It helps with the digestion of lipids only. And if you remember from the last slide, lipid digestion only actually starts when the food gets into the small intestine. An important part of this is the gallbladder. And the gallbladder has the job of storing this substance called bile. And this bile is actually produced in the liver. So the liver there has the job of making the bile. And the gallbladder will store that bile to release it as and when it's needed. So when it is released into the small intestine, so we've got the gallbladder there releasing the bile into the small intestine, that bile has a couple of jobs which we're going to take a look at now. The first one is to do with the actual digestion or the breaking down of lipids. And when we have lipids in the digestive system, by the time they get to the small intestine, and remember nothing actually happens to the lipids until they get to the small intestine, but by the time they get there, 
they're in the form of droplets and these droplets are or can be broken down by the enzyme lipase as we said the only problem we have here is that the droplets are kind of large and they have a small surface area to volume ratio what the bile does is it emulsifies those droplets so the larger droplets are emulsified into smaller droplets and therefore those smaller droplets give a much larger surface area so we have large droplets made into small droplets this is called emulsifying and the great benefit of that is that the smaller droplets there's many of them and they together produce a much much larger surface area and that means the enzymes can work on breaking those down a lot more quickly than if they were in large droplets okay so that's one function of the bile but it also has another function and that is to do with the fact that the environment or the substances in the stomach are acidic the stomach produces acids to help digestion and in fact it's hydrochloric acid which helps protease enzymes to work but the conditions inside the stomach are acid and the bile has the job of neutralizing that acid as it leaves the stomach so the bile will neutralize the acid as it leaves the stomach which means the enzymes in the small intestine are able to work they wouldn't be able to work in acid conditions but the bile neutralizes those or neutralizes the acid conditions so that those enzymes in the small intestine can work so that's the second job of bile okay so there we have it an overview of digestion in quite a lot of detail this is a slightly longer video than i wanted it to be but it's all very very important stuff and a lot of the spec has been condensed down into this small into this relatively short video so that's it for now thank you for watching and i'll see you again soon